everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about more Flash Thompson stories from this book here, the Cullen Bunn Complete Collection. So again, I'm not going to have uh, scans of the images show up, I'm just going to you know, turn the book and show you some images from time to time. But this book uh, takes place in Philadelphia. So as you know, in the last issue we did, 27.1, we talked about how Flash told Peter Parker, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of a jerk, a lot of people that I bullied are not, you know, it turns out they really secretly hate me more than I thought they did, and they still haven't forgiven me on a lot of things. And he goes, and rightly so, so I think it's probably best that I find a new chapter in my life and move on. But it's not a simple move. I thought it was going to be like him talking to that guy, AJ, and like AJ offering him a job, you know, to be a teacher or work in the school system or something. I thought it was going to be something like that. Maybe it still will become something like that. But, uh, but for this, these three issues we're going to talk about today, 28, 29, and 30 of the Cullen Bunn, the Agent Venom run, uh, this does take place in Philadelphia, but it's a different reason than I thought that Flash goes here. Um, actually, what happens is Katie Kiernan, and this is one thing I do like that Cullen Bunn does, he does try to grow a supporting cast. And I, I kind of dig it in this one, like Katie Kiernan in his run, is, is ever since he introduced her, she's been doing a lot in these books. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of nice because it's not a romantic relationship. Um, so I like that. And it's also like, she's she is the reason he gets into some of these situations. So she's a good conduit for storytelling for Flash. Um, so I, I kind of like that too. But I mean, she's also it's starting to get to the point where already, she's already been like the reason he's been involved in three or four you know, ass beatings that he's taken. So it's kind of like, all right, maybe you shouldn't hang out with this girl too much because it seems like she's going to keep getting you into trouble. Um, so in this one, you have the UFOs. Uh, the UFOs who are these villains that I think Venom has run into before, Flash Venom has run into before. But uh, but this is him taking them on directly without, you know, any help, uh, or at least not at first. No Secret Avengers helping him uh, this time, except for one. And that's who we start the book off with is, you know, Flash in New York. Uh, I guess he hasn't made the, the move yet or, ha you know, has is still wrapping up things in New York before he leaves. And he's uh, training with Valkyrie. So I, I do like this because one thing I, I always poke fun at so far in the Colin Bunn run is that, and it happens a lot in this run too, these issues, where uh, whenever Flash needs the suit, he just calls the Avengers. You don't really see who's on the other line. He just go. he's like, Hank. I mean, I guess sometimes you know it's, but it's like, is it Hank Pym, Hank uh, McCoy? But he's like, Hank, Hank, I need the suit. And then the next panel is him with the suit. And I go... All right, so I guess they just give it to him whenever he wants, and then he has to bring it back within 24 hours, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, but they don't really, Cullen doesn't focus any on that. And I guess it's like, okay, maybe maybe he thought Remender would do more of that in the Secret Avengers run, uh, but Remender didn't do too much of that either in that run. So so we kind of are left without really that kind of, those type of scenes. And sometimes they're not, they're not necessary all the time, but having it here or there would have been nice. And hopefully we'll get one by the end of this run. But so uh, Flash is training with Valkyrie, and they're just, you know, uh, he's te she's teaching him how to fight. He's showing her a couple Earth moves that he's known. You know, she's showing him some Asgardian techniques. And then uh, he actually gets the one-up on her a little bit because he kind of trash talks her, and it kind of psychologically throws her off for a second. So then she summons her fire sword, and she cuts off his legs, uh, which are obviously uh, symbiote legs. But still, he's kind of like, hey, come on, low blow. That's not fair. You cheated. Uh, but then they start, uh, you know, getting intimate with each other. And Flash is, uh, you know, he's okay with it. Because <laughs> obviously he's not with Betty anymore. And uh, But he's interested in, in Valkyrie. And I actually really liked that. I was like, I, I like that relationship. It's Like I said, it's not something I would have thought of if I was jumping on a book like this or a character like this. It's not something I would have thought of, but um, I kind of like Flash and Valkyrie together. And I also like their, their both their names start with V, Venom and Valkyrie. So I named this episode the V-Heroes versus the UFOs because, uh, I don't know, it's just silly and I thought it was funny. Um, but uh, but so, yeah, so Katie Kiernan, she gets into trouble. She goes to Philadelphia. She's looking into the story where people are disappearing and she finds out it's the UFOs that are behind it. And they have this new technology and they're... Uh, using it they're working for somebody else as we find out um and so as they're working for this other group that's hired them to interact with this new technology each device they create uh is a different type of uh power like so like they're working on a new device for katie kiernan and when they show it to her it turns out to be like a memory machine so it's like extracting her memories 
and showing them on like a screen, like nearby television screens that are like, you know, like all the electronics that are around. And it's like showing her life and her memories. And so the UFOs are like, oh, this is neat. Cause they don't, sometimes they don't know what the device they create is gonna do. It could evaporate a person. It could like, you know, uh, you know, turn them into a living weapon. It could do a bunch of stuff. Um, it could give them superpowers. And so this one is just happened to be some kind of like weird memory projector. Um, so, but it is, kind of driving her insane like so that's the thing is that it's never good whatever they're creating no so far nothing they've used with this technology to create these new gadgets none of them have been for good like there's been no positive outcomes of any of them so of course her memories are extracting but it's it's driving her insane i guess so uh so flash has to come and essentially help her so he and i like that he does a little bit of detective work he he goes and talks to her editor and finds out which hotel they um, paid for because obviously if she's going on an assignment, the Inquisitor is gonna pay for whatever place she's gonna stay at. And so he goes to that hotel, he sees all this evidence of stuff she's working on that, that leads to the UFOs, and then the UFOs end up showing up because they find out, looking through her memories uh, at their, you know, with the device they have, they find out where she was staying and that she has all this evidence against them. So they go back to their uh, her hotel to burn it down. And Flash is there, and what I like in this is that Flash really tries to save people while fighting the UFOs. And he is definitely outnumbered. The UFOs are stronger than him in a lot of ways. Uh, they have powers that hurt him and the symbiote. Um, the symbiote is also not fully uh, cognizant. So it's not, you know, it's still lying dormant. So that's a, a thing that pops up in this run, which I was, I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, that they mention that because when it's no longer dormant, Flash has the upper hand. And so I was like, yes, that makes sense. Like that's why Eddie and Venom have, were such a great team is because they communicated, they talked, they knew what each other were thinking, and they could, you know, always get the upper hand. They use each other's strengths and stuff. They could always get the upper hand on their foes. And this time it's Flash just thinking himself, and he doesn't have the suit there to talk to him. So that's kind of addressed in this story, and I, I like that. I'm like, yeah, because that's the whole point I thought of writing Venom, is that you, now granted, this the whole point of this run was to do something different. Remender wanted to neuter Venom in a way, and, you know, and then and just make it all about Flash, which is fine. But I like that that's starting to change. Um, so as he's fighting the UFOs, he's getting his butt kicked. People die. Uh, people actually die. Flash cannot save a lot of them from the burning hotel that the UFOs set on fire. And a lot of that evidence that uh, Katie Kiernan worked so hard on is now burnt and gone too. So Flash fails in this, which I I like. It's like he he's like, and he's failed a couple times in Remender's run and, you know, a little bit in this run. I like that. It's in keeping with the character of Venom. Like, you know, uh, Eddie Brock fails a lot. I mean, he's pretty successful at beating the crap out of Spider-Man and tormenting Spider-Man. But outside of that, he's he's an underdog. He, he actually gets beat up a lot. And I like that that's still Flash's thing, too. So, um, so as Katie looks around and she sees all these other dead bodies of people that had been looking face to face into one of these, um, you know, machines that these UFOs have created... She's like, okay, they're all dead. I'm probably gonna die too, as my memories are being sucked out of my head. And that's pretty much the truth. Uh, Flash, on the other hand, he played possum. Uh, when the fire broke out, he had the symbiote kind of camouflage him to look like a burn victim. Um, or not camouflage him, but kind of shape shift a little to make him look like a burn victim. So that way the suit, you know, the the um, you know, the, the UFOs could leave. They thought he was dead. And then Flash was able to like, you know, dig himself out of the rubble and uh you know and, and show you know show that he was actually not burned by the fire um so and he even says he goes yeah but it wasn't very heroic to do that he goes but i just needed i need to live i need to live so i can regroup and think about how to stop these guys and luckily after they saw me burnt and dead they thought i was gone so luckily they didn't in inspect my body which i'm like yeah luckily they didn't um so when they go back to reunite with their their boss the ufos um that's when they start kicking up Katie's machine and she's really starting to lose it now and all of her memories are coming out and it's at this point that Flash again does more detective work and goes and find not that Flash is a detective but I just like that he's he's trying like to figure things out it's good to see a character try to work towards something because he's not going to just know where Katie is and you could have done easily you could have done a thing where like a sliver of the symbiote stuck on one of the U-men and then you know the, and then Flash could go oh I can trace that sliver back to where Katie is Sure, you could easily do something like that, but I like that Flash is like, all right, so Katie was here, and before her room burnt down, I saw a contact that she was going to go talk to. He's nearby, 
I, I remember the address. So let's go find that guy. So as she goes in, he sees Jimmy Z. And I don't know if that's the same Jimmy Z. I think there was a Jimmy Z in Spider-Man that uh, Spider-Man got framed for murdering him. So I don't think it's the same Jimmy Z, obviously, because I think that Jimmy Z is dead. And I, I don't even know if his name was Jimmy Z, but I thought it was. By the way, Flash finds this Jimmy Z guy and says, hey, you know, um, I know this reporter. She was coming to talk to you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was looking for this or whatever. And he's like, and, and so fine. Here's the information. Just get out of my, get out of here. And uh, he, he doesn't give it up that easily. Flash kind of sweet talks him a little bit. But I like that. I was like, hey, that's cool. This is two pages of actual story where Flash is trying to find his friend and uh, and help her. So in the end, when he goes to show up um, to fight, you know, and I know I'm not showing a ton of images, so here I'll show one here with uh, him talking to Jimmy Z. And then we'll show a couple here from, uh, here's a Katie hooked up to the machine with the UFOs and, you know, getting blasted by it, seeing all of her memories and stuff. Um, and this is where she was surrounded by the dead bodies. So yeah, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting to like lift up the book and stuff. I'm just like, I kind of... I don't know. I kind of liked this run a little bit. Um, this was kind of fun to watch, seeing Venom fight the UFOs um, of all of all people. I, I just, I don't know. It's it's not that bad. Um, and uh, so when Venom, because he lost the first time to the UFOs, he now is like, all right, let's go get a rematch with them. And then as he descends down in the warehouse, they see him and they start fighting him. And they're like, you, you showed up again by yourself. You really think you can beat us? And he goes, well, I'm not really by myself. And he goes, check out my girlfriend. Uh, and she, of course, is like, don't call me your girlfriend. He's like, oh, dang. Like, really? In front of the villains? Um, but uh, but that's when Valkyrie shows up. And so I was like, hey, that's cool. Payoff. Uh, it's set up and payoff. He starts off the book training with her, saying he wants to spend more time with her. And now, like... I don't know. Hey, you want to come battle a bunch of bad guys with me? That seems like a great date with Valkyrie. <laughs> so Valkyrie's like, yeah, I'll be right there. And so Valkyrie shows up on her Pegasus with her sword and her and Venom start going at it as far as like fighting the, the villains that go. They're not going at it like making out, <laughs> but they are uh, attacking their enemies and, and beating up the UFOs. Venom's able to save Katie in the process. And this battle gets so intense, though, that at one point, uh, Valkyrie does get one up and she gets knocked down and actually knocked out and Venom is all by himself but then that's when something really awesome happens uh, Venom takes control and Flash doesn't know if it's the suit or the demon which now Swordsman I think kind of spoiled that a little bit for me he said there is an actual demon inside Venom I thought it was maybe just the suit trying to break out but, uh, but I guess it is an actual demon. So Flash doesn't know if the demon took over or if Venom took over. But he's like, either way, he's like, why did either take over? If I die, the demon and the suit are free. So why would either try to save me? Uh, and, and why wouldn't they just let me die before they come out and fight the bad guys? Um, so that's going to be something that will be interesting. I think the suit likes Flash and is probably protecting him against the demon the best it can. That's my thought anyway. Um, so we'll see if that's the truth later on when we read it. But so now, boom, his teeth are out, his claws are out, Agent Venom is fading, and Venom is returning, uh, possibly with a, a demon driving the car. So, uh, so when this guy uh, pops up, he is not messing around. He starts fighting and killing everybody. And uh, the Pegasus of you know Valkyrie's like, oh, holy crap! You know, it's like swinging around. It's like, okay, I'm not needed here. This this giant monster is killing everybody. But he's running around as Venom with the teeth, the tongue, and everything, ripping people apart. And I I think because I mean this happened a few times in the Remender Run too, where Flash lost control. But I think because. Maybe the fact that this book was about, you know, suppression, like neutering the suit and all that stuff. I've been, I wait for those moments where Flash and the suit are unleashed because they're earned because you have all this time where they're not unleashed. And so maybe I give, you know, Remender and Cullen Bunn a little bit more credit with this run about the neutering. I personally don't like it because I like the banter between them. But then again, it makes me want that banter the whole time I'm reading, hoping I'll get it as a payoff. I didn't really in the Remender Flash run, it didn't end with a big moment of him and the suit working together. But maybe the Cullen Bunn run will, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but I do know that I like seeing him as Venom tearing these assholes apart <laughs> sorry for the language uh but he is going crazy on them and and valkyrie she when she wakes up she's like oh crap she's like the suit's in control because she you know she only knows him as venom you know, agent venom and flash she doesn't know about the demon in him 
So she's like, oh, crap, he lost control of the suit. You know, the drugs must have worn off. And it's like, no, it's not that simple. So what she does is she's like, all right, I'm just going to let him do his thing. I'm going to stay out of his way. He's going to fight the UFOs. I'm going to go rescue these people. So Valkyrie goes and saves uh, Katie from the machine and has Katie gather the remaining people that were being experimented on that are still alive. And they all get out of the building uh, before it explodes. Because obviously with Flash, uh, as Venom, fighting everybody, uh, this place is a ticking time bomb. <laughs> so so as there, it looks like it's going to explode, it starts uh, evaporating. And one of the machines that caused people to vanish from the beginning of the book, that's brought back in towards the end. And Flash activates it and sucks all the U-Men into a portal that sends them somewhere. And Valkyrie's left behind with Katie and the others. And they're like, well, you know, where is he? Like, he should be, you know, he should be coming out of that building by now. What's going on? And then, boom, a portal opens and Flash steps back out and uh, and talks to Katie and talks to Valkyrie real quick, um, explaining to them, you know, they're like, where did, where do you, are you in control again? He goes, yeah. He's like, I, I blacked out. What happened? And she's like, well, Venom kind of took over. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's like, yeah, we better get this suit back up to, um, you know, Secret Avengers Tower, or the lighthouse, whatever it's called. He's like, we better do that. He's like, so Katie, I'm glad you're safe. Like, you know, we got to go, whatever. But then it shows sometime later where Flash is still in Philadelphia and he's looking down on the city and he's talking, and you're thinking, oh, he's talking to, like, Valkyrie and Katie, which he is. You see Valkyrie over his shoulder, one shoulder. You see Katie over the other, down there. And he's talking to them. And then as he's talking and he's confessing all these things, and he's trying to open up and be honest and stuff like that about the demon inside of him and, the, and about the suit and all this stuff, um, that's when you realize he's actually not talking to anybody. It's actually the suit who created two decoys. One, I guess, that kind of represents uh, the demon and one that kind of represents the symbiote, but also, you know, in form of Katie and in the form of uh, Valkyrie. And Flash is like, yeah, I think uh, I think this is where we're going to stay from now on. He's like, uh, you know, I think uh, fate just kind of had me end up here in Philadelphia where the suit and this demon have kind of been birthed for the first time. So I'm ready for a fresh start. And he's like, a man and his symbiote and his demon. Like, can the three of us work together? We'll find out. And so that's kind of how uh, that happens. He goes, but one of these days, we are going to have to have a chat. Like, not just you as fake decoys. Like, I'm going to actually have to sit down and work something out with the demon and the suit. And I, I was like, okay, I'm into it. Uh, and then this is where I get pulled back into the negative. Right at the end, where the police in Brooklyn show up. And they uh, hear about all these dead bodies. They show up. They find all this the pile of dead bodies there. It's all these criminals, all these uh, local crime guys. And uh, who was it that escaped from the Savage Six uh, that was not caught? Because obviously Jack Lantern was and some of the other members were killed. Uh, one of them by Betty Branch. She killed the crime master. But there was one person that got away, and that was Eddie as Toxin. And even the cop says, wait, Eddie Brock, no, you're Venom. And he goes, no, I'm not. I'm Toxin. And then he kills the police officer, which doesn't seem very Eddie whatever I and I and I thought Toxin was bonded to a cop so why would it hate cops I guess he dealt with some dirty cops a little bit maybe but I don't know so again I'm like oh I'm really kind of liking what Colin Bunn's doing here it's like a simple fun action story which is like that's okay sometimes you need that you don't need and after 27.1 kind of had the emotion I was expecting it uh, like a just a fun dumb action story but I, I thought it was going to be really dumb the UFO story was actually kind of fun. I was like, hey, I kind of like it. And there was a purpose to it. And it, 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 there was a little bit of growth for the character of Flash and some acceptance with Flash. Um, although he didn't accept it in front of the real Valkyrie and Katie, um, he did accept it on his own. And hopefully that's a first step towards something. So I did I like all that stuff. But then right at the end, it's like super villain Eddie Brock killing whoever he wants to kill with a toxin suit uh, who... I don't know if he communicates with it or not. I guess we'll find out soon. Uh, but that'll be for another episode. We'll talk about issues 31 here through 35 in an upcoming episode, which is called Toxin Returns. Um, so that's going to be like, it's like a one shot and then like a four issue story. I think something like that. So we'll talk about issues 31 through 35 coming up. But this was 28 through 30. And I want to know what your thoughts are uh, out there. Are you Agent Venom fans? Did you like this issue? Are these issues? Did you like this story? Do you like the Valkyrie relationship? Um, do you like him battling the UFOs? I thought it was cool. Um, I liked everything that they did there with that and Katie Kiernan. I thought her character had a little bit of growth in the story too, which I liked. And her having to face her own uh, secrets and things like that straight on and how it kind of was driving her a little mad. I thought that 
screams a lot about the character and maybe that she doesn't actually like her profession sometimes, uh, despite the fact that she says she does. And I thought it added a little bit to her character. And then seeing Valkyrie show up and be with Flash um, and then fight together, like, I thought that was cool too. Like, uh, that was really fun. Because I was thinking about that. I'm like, if they're together in the Secret Avengers comic, I would have loved to see more of them interacting um, other than just making out. I think there was one time where they had to fight each other in the Secret Avengers book where she was possessed. But I was like, I, I want like a story where they team up and do something. Little did I know it was actually going to be in this book, and I'm glad it was. So good job, Cullen Bunn. And again, for those of you who were like, hey, you skipped Minimum Carnage, we're going to talk about it. Minimum Carnage will be something we do next season on the show when we do another Carnage Week. So we're just saving it for that reason. Uh, because obviously I, w I was like, hey, I want to do more Flash stuff later. So let's save a story or two, kind of like we did with Eddie Brock. We saved a few stories. We, we did a, like a time jump, and we skipped ahead like five years and, and skipped like a you know, couple years of Venom comics. We're doing that here. We're skipping Minimum Carnage, and we'll skip something else, um, and then we'll talk about more of that next season. So let me know your thoughts of issues 28 and 30 down in the comments below, and as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.